Wonderful. Are you ready for the word? Excellent. Psalm 71, verse 21 is our master text. And uh, let's look at the, uh, at the word today uh, from this uh, platform. Doing great in 2024. Doing great. Amen. Read somebody. You will increase my honor and comfort me once again. Why would David want his honor to be increased? What had diminished? Why would he want comfort? Now, the word comfort here is not what we perceive it to be meaning. But the word comfort here is strength. You will strengthen me again. And so what had weakened him? What had caused him to lose his initial virtue and value? Are you with me somewhere? Now, believe you me, we're not about to be exploring all of those things. But as we walk through life and through years and through situations and through everything that God has allowed us to encounter, we will always find that in one way or another, we get knocked, we get challenged, we get discouraged. But Paul says it, and I want you to always confess it. None of these things will prevail against us. He is not denying that they exist. But he says they don't have the capacity to defeat us and annihilate us. You understand that? To completely undo it. To put you in disrepair such that you can no longer be together. We don't live in a fictitious world. We live in the real world. And that's where Jesus left his church. He said, don't take them out of the world, but keep them in it. And then he said the statement that every believer must always, always embrace, sanctify with the truth. For your word is the truth. Are you with me, someone? Uh-huh. And the word sanctify means distinguish them. Separate them from the very things that every human being is exposed to in the world. This same Jesus had said, in the world they shall experience trouble. So we don't have a leader who deceives because our faith is not a fake. It is the real faith. And it has got its own mysteries that sometimes you will not understand. So says Paul when he writes to Timothy in first volume, chapter number three, verse number nine. He says, uh, we must understand the mystery of our faith. Are you with me, somebody? Are you with me? Please understand that. That our faith has got its own mystery. And so it's important that uh, you are able to Take this one, that one done, won't write, my one will write. Bless the Lord. So when you come home, you say that the pastor gave me his pen. Amen. Don't, don't bring it back. Keep it so that you can remember me. All right? Bless the Lord. And so, when, 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 when we walk through these situations, we must understand that God will not prevent the situations to encounter us, but he will prevent them from destroying us. Now, please know that. Because for some reason, God has calibrated. God has designed every and any situation. It does not matter how big or great how extraordinary it is, but because you are his child, 
it reduces the bigness of the situation for your own ability to manage it. Know that, please. The Bible says very clearly, even in that temptation, God will make a way out of it. Now I'm talking about a temptation. I can talk about other things. No pain that anybody sustains has the ability to destroy you. Particularly if you know biblical principles on how to manage pain. That's why the Bible says, we are not those who mourn like unbelievers. Because for any blessing or benefit of God to manifest in your life, you must know the principle that applies. If you don't know the principle that applies, you'll miss the offering that that blessing has for you. So, the Bible then says in John number 8, to those who have believed, continue in my word, you will know the truth. And then the truth will set you free. The truth will be the source of your freedom. Even from situations that otherwise would seek to undo you. Completely, completely devastate you. That's why also when we talk about prayer, we must talk about principles of effective prayer. Not just prayer, but effective prayer. Because that's what I'm talking about. The fervent, effective prayer of a righteous person avails much. So there's greater that can come from prayer. But you must know the principles that are going to bring you to a space of fervent, effective prayerfulness. It means prayers that bring into your life extraordinary benefits. And some of these benefits become much more higher than actually the thing you ask for. That's what the Bible is saying in, in, in Ephesians chapter number 3, verse number 20. Is that not so? What does the Bible say? God is able to do exceedingly abundantly far above what you ask. The word ask there is what you have prayed for. Nah, we, you're not hearing me. Thank you for your amen. But you're not hearing me. Listen, God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, far above. Oh my God. You see, Paul is even unable to express exactly how much God can do. He tries to use all the adjectives and the, and the adverbs, but he still feels he has not said enough. And the Bible says, when you pray, God is actually going to go far beyond your prayer, far beyond your asking. Are you with me, somebody? And so it means those that are not praying are not even giving him the chance to show that he can go far beyond. So give God the chance to show that he can go far beyond. Give God the chance to show that he can reveal and demonstrate his greatness to your life, through your prayer life. Prayer life, prayer life, prayer life. Before you even come to the subject of tithing, which now you're, we, we, we have made it a big debate in church, isn't it? Huh? And the Bible is very clear in Malachi chapter number 3 that if you tithe, and I don't, don't ask me, ah, whether is, is it falling under grace or not, uh, the word is clear. If you tithe, see if I will not open the windows of heaven and cause a rain that can fall upon you and you will not contain what it will bring. That's the God who is our God. When we engage him on the principles of his word, his greatness begins to be revealed. People who have got a great God must know how to engage with him. Because even if you've got a great God, he's got principles whereby you must engage with him. You see, things in life are all bad. 
somebody say amen. Yeah. Things in life are all bad. If you don't follow the rules, you find yourself on the, on the side of collision. If I were to probably leave church and on a two-way um, uh, street, I start driving very uh, happily on the right with oncoming traffic like one guy was doing the other day because I think his uh, eyes were twisted a little bit. Um, it could have been something that twisted his eyes. And I was following him. It was late at night when we celebrated uh, mom in the South Coast. So when I drove back, it was very late at night through Hibardin. This gentleman was decided all the time to, to drive on the right. Now Hibardin is very, very, very dark. So I decided out of sheer pastoral sensitivity not to overtake him because I could. So I began to drive behind him. When he came to the right, I came to the right and flick at his lights as if I want to overtake him. And quickly dart to the left and then I would stay on the left. I thought I must monitor this soul so that he can arrive home. Because then the next thing, the family is put in, in trouble. Because somebody has decided to be irresponsible. So those of us who are responsible, who know the value of life, both the one that he, he, is, he is living and the one that he might interfere with, with oncoming cars. So I needed to be pastoral, you know, drive with him. And then his son was following me, and he's a fast driver, that boy. And when he try and overtake me, I broke him. So that he does it. He stays this side, he tries this side. Then he, he saw my, my style. And then I called him on the phone and said, we are dealing with somebody who has decided to be irresponsible. So be careful when you overtake. Then I stepped aside. He shot like a bullet. And I monitored that fellow until he turned somewhere. I think there's some, an off-ramp that says Mzumbe, if I'm not mistaken. And he took that off-ramp there and said, whatever happens in the bushes, the hand of the Lord. But I fulfilled my calling. Hallelujah. Now, if you miss principle, you will go head on calling with God's plan and purposes for your life. It's not because God wants you to be there. It's because you have decided to step aside from principle. Everything has its own consequences, isn't it? For every input, there's an out. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. And so servants of the Lord, God wants us to live a life of greatness. Now, please understand this. We have got a very big challenge in the church. And please, was you a servant of God, rebuke me after the service if I misrepresent this. When we talk greatness, people don't understand what you're talking about. They think that we're talking being gargantuan. Sorry, man, that small word. There's no other word that I have that I can use in the church. You know, they, they think about being gargantuan. Do you understand? Yeah. 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 It can't tell it. I Sorry. Yeah. Sit, sit, sit very quiet. Sit very quiet. The, the Lord is not coming back soon. Amen. You know, very inflated. Over and above your own actual sides. We ain't talking that. We don't talk inflated egos. We talk the grace of God. Invested and arrested in a human being. In all its manifold expressions. So the Bible says, of his fullness. Can you measure God's fullness? Of his fullness have we all. You can't receive the fullness of God and be small. Or oh, someone's not with me here. You can't receive the fullness of God and have a very self-pitying mentality. You can't receive the fullness of God and be pessimistic in life. And be always in, infested with negative thoughts. 
You're always looking at things negatively. You seem to have allocated yourself the responsibility to be a bearer of negatives. You can't receive the fullness of God and be a bitter person and walk around and be that. When God can give you a vision of goodness, oh my God, until your bitterness robs you the greatness of God expressed through you. Now you know the story. The name of the girl is Hannah. She was praying for a child. But because she was bitter, she was not getting anything. You know the story. The name of the lady is Naomi. Because she had lost her husband and the two sons. Because she was bitter, she was negative. She, she, she behaved as somebody who wanted to master her own pain without anybody showing any comfort. She even told her daughters-in-law, please go back to your people. But only one saw the opportunity of becoming history ordained by God. Her name is Ruth. And when she said, go back, she said, I ain't going to go back. Your people shall be my people. Your God shall be my God. She stood up against negative bitterness because she was discerning that she did not come into this family by mistake. She came by divine design. And the Bible shows me that eventually Ruth is Quoted as one of the ancestors of Jesus. A more beaters. You understand what I mean? Somebody who was worshipping a God that was always pleased when children were sacrificed to it. But the day she said, your God shall be my God. She dissociated herself from the God who demands the lives of children in order to, to be satisfied and appeased. And that time, she redefined herself. My God, she taught her mother-in-law that there's a moment where you can redefine yourself. You cannot walk in bitterness and hope to get God's greatness in the inside of you. There must come a time when you let go of pain, when you let go of grudges, because they are going to limit what God can do in and through your life. If you want to do great, let go of sin. You know, Jesus would have been beat. Did you know that? Yeah. Bible says, he came to his own, and his own siblings rejected. And guess who accepted? Anyone except his own. By so doing, Jesus becomes a redeemer. He ends being self and name. Swarabha. Name. Swa. Because he refused to dwell in the bitterness of Jerusalem. Joseph could have been Peter. And when he finally, because he saw them before they could see him, when he finally wants to reveal himself, the Bible says, he stood up in the room and Thing. He cried until the whole city, let, let, let's presume, let's presume that was it, until the whole city of Cairo heard him. And when they asked what was happening, they said, Joseph, the secretary of state, the prime minister of Egypt, cried. By so crying, he let go of Britain. He let go of grudges. And he said to them, you know, what you did was intended for me. 
But because I walked away from bitterness, God turned it for my good. Walk away from bitterness, somebody. God has got kings and greatness waiting for you. And my Bible then tells me that he began to reveal himself in the newness of his confession. That actually, you are now talking to a good man. Not the one you sold. Not the one you hated. Not the one you rejected. Not the one you abused. Find time in your life to walk over any headache that's going to reduce your greatness. Nothing must take the place of God in your life. No experience, no pain, no bitterness, no nothing, no rejection, nothing, 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 nothing. Oh my God, not even being scandalized. What's that for? For when somebody has spoken ill of them, they sit on that. But they want to fight bad, hit bad, aid bad. Oh my God. Oh, ho, 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 ho. You can do far much more better than that. There's no feedback that surpasses the greatness of God in your life. How did I come here? I was just moving the notes. No, I'm just not doing things. Yeah. Being for the Lord, I'm not standing up, getting this. Somebody say, Amen. Bless the Lord. Right. Did you read Psalm 71? What did you read? You will increase my honor. That's right. Come. Somebody say, in 2024, I pray that God restores and increases my dignity. I want to give him the praise. Give him the praise. Worship it. Worship it. Worship it. It's about time that you reclaim your ground. It's about time that whatever you lost, you ensure that God doubles it up for you. When God restored Israel, he said, they shall be double for their trouble. There's no trouble that is going to reduce you when God is your partner in life. There's no trouble that's going to reduce you when you walk your life and live your life and work your life in line with God's principles. There's no trouble that can reduce you to what God has not ordained. There is no challenge that is equal to the mighty God. Oh my God. We're talking about mighty God. Not the God that people can make. Not the God that people can imagine. Paul comes in, in Athens. He finds in the, in the marketplace. People not only have imagined, but they've created the statue. And they've even put upon that statue, that, that whole uh, altar there, to an unknown God. So why are you even worshipping some, something that you don't know? There's no sense. Spare your land until the time the knowable God reveals himself. Don't be gullible because of circumstances. Don't be gullible because of social influence. Because of trends. Because it is becoming trendy in our days for people to search for gods that they don't know. And then they will say, I'm spiritual. Amen. All right. And so the Bible here is very good. But if you read before that, I think there's a verse that says, I was young. Yeah. You, 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 you better have a very clear recollection of your journey with God. Or oh, someone's not with me here. It's four verses apart there. Verse 18. Yeah. Now also when I'm old. No. About that. Verse. Check verse. 17. Oh God, you have taught me from my youth. It depends what principles have you imbibed at an early stage of your walk with God. 
for you to be able to live a life of greatness. Paul says to Timothy, from youth, you have known the Holy Scriptures. You see, life ministries, we don't preach the word because we lack things we can entertain you with. We have understood that the Bible is true when it says man shall not live by bread and love, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Not hear us. Not imagination, not creativity of people. It's a great guy. Amen. He senses where the spirit is moved. And you know those people in the church that don't realize that God has an appointment with a small boy? They take it away like the, like that. You know. They deprive the small boy an encounter with God. Amen. You, do you understand that? Yeah. That you see. In this life, in this life, you've got to start there. Got to start there. Don't try to start when it is late. That's why the Bible says, remember your creator in the days of your youth. Before the older times come where you will say, I can no longer do this. Because you have overloaded yourself with too much stuff. And for you to try and heave yourself up through it becomes difficult. So that, but these things begin now to overweigh themselves. There are many thoughts, there are many tendencies, there are many ideas, there are many impressions that you've got now to fight through. But if you started early to defeat certain things, God, by the time your old age issues come, you have laid a very firm and formidable basis for greatness. You have taught me from my youth. I steal. Somebody say, I steal. Oh my God, you sound like you're not stealing. All right. Somebody say, I steal. Don't stack and not maintain. Are you listening to me, somebody? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, whatever you stack and wax, don't throw it away. Keep it. So that any other time, regardless of what you're going through, you will say, I steal. I'm facing this, but I steal. Are you with me, somebody? I'm challenged by this, but I steal. Oh my God, someone's not with me here. I steal proclaim your wonderful works. I did not just start when I was facing Saul. And I say, Saul, do you know who's standing before you? When my daddy did not accord to me the status of a loving son, he sent me into the field to look after his sheep. Lions and bears come, but God came with his wonderful webs. I could grab a lion and tear it apart. I could grab a bear and tear it apart. When I came before Goliath, I told him, you look ten times more higher than me. But in my spiritual eyes, you are one-tenth of your value. I can take you out any time. And I saw God defeating him by one stone. Therefore, I steal. Oh, my God. I did not stop then. I did not, I did not just experience him when it was in these situations. But I took my experiences with me. I still proclaim your wonderful words. Somebody say, I still. Come on, give him the glory, somebody. He's the God who can never get tired of you. Doesn't matter how much you praise him, he never gets tired of you. Doesn't matter how much you pray to him, he never gets tired of your prayers. Doesn't matter how much you walk right, he never gets tired of your walking right. I still proclaim your wonderful words. You are designed and dedicated to proclaim his wonderful words. Make it your lifetime duty. Thank you, sir. But I don't think the suit. Yeah? There's that. Where's the water? What I need is water. 
not a sweat. Where is that verse? Verse 18. Even when I'm old and gray, I can assure you they're not talking about me. God, somebody say God, don't abandon me. Uh, you don't even sound like you, you mean it. Can you try and be smarter? Tell me, don't talk to me, talk to God. God, don't abandon me. You know, you reach times in your life when you need God more than your initiatives enabled you earlier. Where your zeal was still your kickstart. Huh? Like it says, when I was young, I proclaimed. But now, he's older. He says, God, don't abandon me, please. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Know how to evolve with your life changes. So that you will keep the greatness of God with you. Know how to evolve with your life changes. Say things along the path of your growing in the Lord. That constantly and continuously manifests his presence. And enjoying your commitment. Don't abandon me. Then. Verse number 17. Verse number 17. You have taught me from my youth and I still proclaim. Yeah. I'm following what I'm taught. Verse number 18. Here yeah. I am pleading to God some father. So here the praises come from answered prayer. Don't abandon. Then we like say, ah, you're not with me somewhere. You're not with me. You see, there are things that God's going to walk with you through. And those will produce the eyes and the dang. Let's move. Verse number 19. Your righteousness reaches heaven. Up, up, up. Who knows where God is? Who knows where God leaves? Come boy. David was in Jerusalem, but for some reason, he had a measuring stick for the righteousness of God. And the more he was measuring it, the righteousness was just going up and up and up and up and up and up. He then gained confidence and began to say, you who have done great things, there's no one like you. If you have the right measuring yardstick, for the righteousness of God, you'll be able to speak about his greatness. Let me say that again. If you have the right measuring stick or yardsticks for the righteousness of God, you'll be able to speak about his greatness. Your righteousness, which is heaven, he is measured. You have done great things. God but who's like him? This morning I'm proclaiming a God who has no match to. I thought I'm speaking to a living church, but it does look like I'm still talking to a church that is rising from its Christmas sleep. I've just said to you, you, I'm preaching a God who is matchless, incomparable. And he's the God of your greatness, the source of your greatness. The God whose righteousness nobody can measure. The God whose mercies never come to an end. Until Jeremiah said, if it was not for your grace, we would have been diminished. He says, your promises and your, uh, and your grace and your mercies, they are new. Every morning, I can't exhaust your maces. My God, it's time I wake up. They are waiting for me already. Or oh, someone's not with me here. It's time I go to sleep. They are watching over me. When I wake up, they are waiting for me. 
They are here to take me through the issues of life. So, Yalla said, let's go, Lulia. Listen, mom, I'm doing it. The handle and the figure, I mean, that's in. Yeah. That's it. Huh? That's it. Huh? Nalas, don't go there. Land buses are food. Land buses. You go, little, little, little. Eh? Which is so fierce saying? As long as a man to march. Come here, walk them soon. Why am I saying? Oh, London, Lord, South, Israel, I go sailing, I go landing. And the Lord of the Saying and as we obey it. It's amazing how sometimes we get excited by songs that are not supported by scripture. The, the small wonder, that's what somebody used to say when I grew up, small wonder that even our faith walk equals the songs we sing. Our poems, our revelation knowledge resembles the songs we sing. But if you sing like David, you will know that you will say, Your righteousness, oh God. It's like it starts from somewhere until it vanishes in the heavens. There's no measure in that. But when you start hearing that song, something starts billowing within you. Then you start knowing that, Oh my God, I'm connected to greatness here. I'm not just a partner to a a, a, a weakling and someone who's sheepish. Connected to someone who knows where what begins and where what ends. Connected to somebody who's have, who has the beginless beginning and the endless end. I'm connected to immeasurable greatness itself. I got my father is too big. Hallelujah. Oh my God. That's why Jesus, when he taught his, his own disciples how to pray, their prayer, not the Lord's prayer, please. There's no Lord's prayer there. It's the disciples' prayer. When he taught them how to pray, their prayer said, when you pray, say, our Father, start talking like me. Our Father, who art in the heavens, that David saw. Hallowed be your name. Could you please pray what makes you the king you are? Oh my death. Would you please bring what makes you the king you are? Let it come with what you have endorsed as your perfect will. I'm not looking for a permissive will. I don't want to, to live on the basis of a fake. I want to live on the perfect faith. Oh my God. Ooh, 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 ooh. When Paul talks to the church in Rome, he says, By the renewing of your mind, present your bodies as a living sacrifice. Which is your reason? Anybody can do that. Reasonable service. Anyone can do that. The word reasonable says, I'm not asking for anything that is beyond your ability. Then he says, when that mind is renewed, you will be able to discern that which is good, that which is acceptable. Listen to this word. That which is the perfect will of, not permissive. We we'll like to live on some permissive thing. That's not what a renewed mind lives on. The renewed mind lives on the path that stout. Are you listening to me somewhere? Yeah. And so verse number 20, quickly. Oh my God. You know that someone is so big and we're not knowing the end. Where we should be. By rights, by heavenly standards, 
This is not even an introduction. Read. You caused me to experience many troubles and misfortunes. Yeah. But you revived me again. There's a part. I don't know what you must have gone, my head have gone to. I don't know what you are afraid of. Oh. There is a time of revival. You can never be diminished. Nothing has the ability to destroy you. Nothing. If there's one thing I am fully convinced, is that only God can destroy you. Only God can destroy you. That's the one I fear. Hallelujah. Listen to this. You have allowed experiences of troubles and misfortune to come my way. But when that happened, I did not turn my attitude against. I waited for your revive. Some folk miss the grand moment that when they are being screened, they jump. When they're experiencing trouble, they become, there's a word I wanted to use and the Holy Spirit doesn't want you to use it, burn off. And they start showing gratitude. So this God feels. That's many days. You preach to me, you share with me, this God. But when I experience my troubles, then I come to you and say, this God of yours. When I say that, I am disowning God from being my Savior. I'm handing him over to others. This God of yours. But you will revise me again. You will bring me up again. And it does not matter how deep I might have come. But only you, the matchless God, the God of righteousness, the God of greatness, are able to revive those who have gone too deep into the dwelling of things. Listen to this thing. You'll bring me even from the depths of the earth. Well, try it one day. You ain't going to come there. That's why Jesus spoke about the gates of hell. Gates of hell is a place on earth. It exists. It's not hell. But it is called the gates of hell. It means if you're going to go to hell, that's where you're passing. Of course, it's an idiot. But it is a geographic area which has got inexplicable fires and gases that you will not even be able to spend one second if you step into it. Your entire breath is choked, dead, in a split of a second, gone. That's how toxic and deadly are those gates. So when Jesus says he's building a church that even the gates of hell shall not break, it means you can, you can actually be sustainable in the gates of hell. Oh, somebody's not with me here. No situation can destroy you. God is building you with stuff and material that will preserve you against the depths of the earth. Swana Zinche. Huh? Hallelujah. No weapon prepared against you shall prosper. Oh, you guys don't understand scriptures. You only understand recitations. You have taken that scripture and made it a recitation. In God. No weapon prepared against you shall prosper. There's somewhere where you must start. God is the creator of the designer of the weapon. Even when he sits at the place where he wakes, that God is watching him. 
When he desires you to annihilate you, God starts speaking to the weapon. Weapon, it doesn't matter what you're manufactured for. But I have my servant. And you are not going to devour, destroy, or annihilate him. Come. So when I say, I'm talking about that. That the one who wants to make use of your own life will start at the manufacturing plant to protect you. Not when somebody already has the weapon to come against. God speaks to the manufacturer and God commands the weapon to lose its efficacy. Oh my God, someone's not with me here. <laughs> Are you listening to me, somebody? But he didn't. The verse says, you will what? Let me check if you understand scriptures. 54, 17, you can copy. It's an open book text. Check it out. What does it say? How about the words? About words. Read. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Huh? None, 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 none. 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 I know now you're starting to imagine weapons that you know. Like, how many? How many? Oh, many? Ah, the one who's speaking here is God Himself. No weapon prepared against you shall pass. <laughs> and every time, every time which rises against you in which judgment, which rises against you in judgment, what will happen to the town? You shall condemn. Now God says, you also just have something to do, please. Now I told you. In covenant partnership, I will block the manufacturer and the weapon. In covenant partnership, I'm enabling you to block the words. But in the case of Jacob, in Genesis number 31, he went to Laban at night. When Laban was accosting Jacob, he said to him, don't to Laban, don't say one way. That's going to affect Jacob. He is my servant. And when Laban meets Jacob, he says, You know what? I wanted to destroy. I had already conspired curses that I was going to release upon you. But at night, God came to me and said, Change your way. Instead of cursing and blessing. Oh my God, are you with me, somebody? Bible says, in the book of Numbers, that this prophet was sent, hired. Oh my God, you prophets must be careful because you're vulnerable, especially when money is involved. It's hired to go and cast the children of Israel. And God met the prophet with a donkey. He was on his journey, and God just put a stupid guy right in front of him. And the donkey, sorry. I'm making stupid statements. I didn't want a donkey. God put himself as an angel of the Lord in front of the donkey. The donkey never gone to school. Never did great again. To study vowels, alphabets, sentence construction. Sees an angel of the Lord. Doesn't move any. When this guy whips, whips, the donkey realizes, for the first time, the prophet can't descend God. And so I'm going to help the prophet. And the donkey starts speaking. Addresses the prophet of the Musa. Because God was blocking him from chess, then he turns in his journey, goes back to the one with Hayati, who says, listen here. I can't test that which God has blessed. Some of you are, are very arrested in generation like this. I don't know where you get that stuff from. Because that which God has blessed, nothing can test. Nothing. Nothing. You see, Buddhists, we borrow too much from the Americans. Now I'm serious. Because they were running around in the peanut fields, being whipped by these whites. 
And so they just saw themselves as a cast. So the success is that they are now making, when they see a fall, then they say, ah, it's a previous generation. Ah. When God comes into your life, you become a new creation. The other word in First Peter chapter number 2, verse number 9, you become a chosen gene. Don't give me generation. A chosen gene. Meaning a gene of a special. Bible says that which is born of God overcomes. It is never because the genes of God are in your system. Are you listening to me, somebody? Now, if he is a mighty God, then he transfers mightiness. Ah, copy. What? Where are we? Huh? We must be. Where were we reading? All right, go to verse number 20. 71 20. You caused me to experience many troubles and misfortunes. Uh -huh. but, but you will bring me out. Somebody say, I'm coming up. Oh, you don't sound like you're coming up. It sounds like you're going down. Somebody say, I'm coming up. I'm coming up. I'm revived again. I'm reconnecting with myself in Christ. In Christ. God's perfect plan. God's perfect purpose is my portion. Nothing, nothing whatsoever shall separate me from the love of God in Christ Jesus. Come on, give him the praise. Verse 21, quickly. We must go home, by the way. Because you will increase my honor and comfort me once again. <laughs> Has your honor been dented? Has your dignity been dented? It's time for the increase again. Don't look at what blinders have made. Count it all back time for the excellency of knowing God. Listening to me somewhat. The world will measure you on the basis of your blunders. But God will measure you on the blessings of your repentance. When you turn around, it's as if nothing had ever happened before. He turns you around when you turn around. Oh my. So if you turn around, God comes and turns you around. Are you listening to me, somebody? Yeah, 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 yeah. Because he knows the right side. When I'm tested and tried, I shall come out shining like gold. He knows my journey. He knows where I come from and where I'm going. And there will be tests and trials. But tests and trials will never be tragedy to me. I will try in the name of Jesus. He leads you in triumphant. I love it in Isizulu. On the honor of brain bread. Is that the right? Yeah. Is that correct? Yeah. And so this is when model model is material. No. And so this is when what? Eh? What do I do here? Be a boy. Because it's obsessed. Because it's obsessed. Is that? What do I do? It was a triumphal celebration in the city of Rome where after they had defeated nations they would arrest the king the chief commander of the army and the commanders of the battalions and put them first in line and then all the soldiers behind but the king da -da 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 -da, they would strip them naked to shame they would walk you in. And the commander of the army of Rome would be riding on a white horse. Because white horse, even biblically, represents victory. So he would ride on a white horse. 
will start, you know, uh, doing all kinds of things to show that they have just overcome. And as they do that, the women would come out. Oh, thank God for women. The women would come out. And some of these silly women would go to these naked men and they beat their, 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 you know, their nakedness. Was they were shaming them. Oh my God, you don't understand what I'm talking about. Bible says in Colossians number 215, God triumphed over the devil and he made a public spectacle of him. That's where God has called you to function. And so some of these training approaches, they're ignorant. That's a brand, brand, global mob. They're busy trying to reinvent a God who conquers. When God has already conquered, ours is to be up and with me, global mob. Some of the prayers that are made, it's like they're still in the battlefield. Oh my God, you're not with me, somebody here. Meanwhile, the Bible says you have already overcome, but you are not unaware of the tricks of the enemy. Eh? But at least I could remember his child. But we turned to months. Volition. I first started parts. It's a bail in the way you play. I was in full in to enjoy the Mazala. It says full in in our heart. It's a bad. Who are trying to invent a victorious call when the Bible presents. And so, saints, they read. It's doing. Great in 2024 means you are going to petition, you're going to request, you're going to pray for with thanksgiving that God will give you the increase of the grace that will cost you to do far much more you have done along your trip. You are not going to dwell on your misses. You are not going to dwell on your weakness. The Bible says, let the weak say, I am strong. Are you listening to me, somebody? That's right. So be it like so. What? Turn to somebody, says, he means, we are ahead for it to say he grows in ten times. In closing number one, in closing number two, in closing version number three. <laughs> you can't finish it in it. And then in the next niggas, I want to see Faggy eternity to go on. But in the final pillar, eternal lifestyle. I don't know how. Oh, yeah, but the Bible says the, the spirit of the prophet. Is subject to the prophet, isn't it? All right. In closer. Deuteronomy. Chapter number two, verse number seven. Deuteronomy chapter number two, verse number seven. For the Lord your God has blessed you. Somebody say, I am blessed. Blessed. With the blessings of Abraham. But, say but. Come on, Ted. You want to watch? Come on. Not no but, I'm a Zimtana. How do we spell but? Eh? How do you spell but? No, tell me what I'm going to tell you. But I'm a Zimtana. When I'm going to tell you, but I'm going to tell you. How do we spell part? P U 
T. Full stop. And when you say but, you are dealing with every other thing that you have already said. Are you listening to me? Does that say? No. Before that. Huh? Yes. Thank you. You have the blessing of Abraham. But. That is. What is that little word? Superseded. Yes. Super. Superseded. By the blessing. Abraham was merely the representation of what God wanted to do finally. So when Jesus comes, every other person submits to him. Are you listening to me? That's right. The blessings of Abraham were exclusive to Jew. But faith includes you. Now, if you can have faith in Jesus... Why limit yourself to Abraham? The Bible says in Ephesians 1 3, God has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly place, still Christ Jesus. That's where you are. Your placement is in Christ, and therefore your blessings are in Him. Now, blessings is a very big word, but people prefer the material part. Watch this. Your God has blessed you in all the work of your hand. There are blessings that come through the works of our heads. And somebody must say, in 2024, I'm not going to sit back, I'm going to work. My faith will be accompanied by works. Are you listening to me, somebody? Yeah, 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 yeah. And the Bible says, God shall bless the works of your hands. Or say that, somebody, God shall bless the wax of my hands, the wax of my brains, the wax of my creativity, the wax of my faith, the wax of my obedience. God shall bless according to his riches in Christ Jesus in the heavenly places. Amen. Wow, come on, give me the praise. Then the Bible says, He who has watched over you throughout the journey of immense wilderness. I like that. That it does not matter how great is the wilderness you are going to pass through this year. He's watching over you. The fact that God is blessing you does not exclude wildernesses. But according to Jeremiah, the Bible says, there shall be grace in the wilderness. Oh, you're not with me, somebody. I think that's very Jeremiah 31, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it says, we found grace in the wilderness. Why? Because God was watching over us in the great wilderness. Can you please read it so that the saints will see it and build their faith as they go home? Jeremiah, I think it's 31 too. Three one. Now it's a body. This is what the Lord says. This is what the Lord says. They Somebody say, I hear what you're saying. I receive what you're saying. I believe in what you're saying. I meditate on what you're saying. I'm renewing my mind. I'm changing my attitude. I'm going to apply myself to do according as you say. What is the Lord saying? They found favor in the they wilderness. They found favor in that great wilderness. You are going to do great in 2024, regardless of how great your wilderness is. Aisha Kandala Bosia. We're not talk we we're not believing a stone here, sir. My son, God is going to so anoint you. I'm talking. One of these days, you'll be singing. 
sick will be cleared instead. Oh, no person must walk with their wilderness. If people walk in wilderness, they must buy in place. Hey, wilderness becomes your testy ground. Wilderness becomes your trying time. But wilderness is not designed to be your tragedy. It is a place of trying. Because there's grace in the wilderness. The God who watches over you is in your great wilderness. Bible says they walk through an immense wilderness. But in that wilderness they found grace. Can you get the King James Version, my boy? And go back to the other verse and then we finish here. That's number two. Amen. Bless the Lord. Now, the other scripture. Deuteronomy 2 7. For the Lord thy God uh -huh. hath blessed thee in all the works of thy hand. Uh -huh. He knoweth thy walking. He knows your walking. Oh my God. There's no one who's going to be walking where the Lord does not know where they're walking. If it go. I walk through the valley of a shadow by death. I shall fear nothing for your staff and your rod. They strengthen me. You anoint my head. You prepare a table in the presence of my enemies. Whilst my enemies are watching over me, you come in with your a la carte. You come in with your buffet. You come in with the multifold blessings of your graces, the riches of your mercies, the riches of your glory, the riches of your grace. Even though my enemies come, I sit like there's no enemy. Oh, come on, somebody. You know who man not chawa gwa shaya band paying bots. Keep it band wa shaya ba fun sinewa no ba bo kwam chaya. Do because when he was preaching, then you see they were overwhelmed. It's not that they were not responsive. They were overwhelmed. They are not at this great God. So they were and father. And he expected an aim. There was no aim. Pulled out his bell. And started with the pastor. Oh, yeah. He was walking by the spirit. Pop, 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 pop. All over the place. Those were mad guys who knew that God deserves to be praised. You don't talk of a great God and shut your mouth. When you're talking of a great God, praise him. Oh, somebody's not with me here. Are you listening to me, somebody? When you're walking through this great wilderness, it doesn't have to be a small one. You're going to do great, even if you're walking through great wilderness. The time doesn't matter. Others were camped for 400 years. But when they came out, they came out with gold. They came out with silver. They came out with heads of cattle and sheep. 400 years of slavery. They despised and abused. But when they came out, when God had declared the liberation, when Moses came and said, Sack my people, let my people go. Oh my God, you need that prophetic word that will determine the time is up. You can no longer stay here. And somebody who is Mourning somebody endlessly. The Bible says in, in Deuteronomy 33, Israel mourned for 30 days. You can't go beyond a particular time. Because when you go beyond a particular time, you're not going to see the Joshua that God is raising. You're not going to see God's next agenda. Now, listen to this. 40 years. <sighs> What did he say about them in, 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 in Babylon? He said, we are going to stay there for 70 years. 
I just said, ah, pack, 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 pack. I said, no, 70. I know arithmetics. 70, 70. You're going to be here for some. I know the plans of God. It is plans to prosper you. To give you what is already waiting for you. Oh, you're not hearing me. The Lord thy God has been with. He never leaves you nor forsake. Watch this. Come and read it out with that. The last sentence we had done. These 40 years? These 40 years, 40 years, the Lord your God has been with you. Somebody say he has been with me. This past 2023. These past 365 days. He has been with me. He has never forsaken me. I've been able to come that far. Because he has been with me. If it was not for his grace, I would have been diminished. Ah, oh, my God. Never lives you not forsake you. What does the Bible say? You have left nothing. I want to give him a praise. Give him the praise. Give him the praise. Give him the praise. Give him the praise, somebody. Give him the praise. He's the great I am. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not let. That's what we're talking about here. So when we say you're going to do great in 2024, we're not talking some stupid thing. We're talking about the great God who walks with you in great wildernesses and ensures that you lack nothing. When the serpent bites, there is a frozen snake. When there's thirst, there's a rock that gushes with water. When it so happens that you are so hungry and there's nowhere where to get food because it's a great wilderness, he will rain meat from the heavens. He will rain bread from the heavens because now you are with the bread of life. His life will be your life. There's nothing you can lack the shepherd of your soul, the shepherd of your faith, the shepherd of your wellness, the shepherd of your future, the shepherd of your faith, the shepherd of your fighting, the shepherd of your finances, the shepherd of his faithfulness. You shall lack nothing. There are folks here. Since I go away, my gem tana. I'm sure I'll tell you to the truth, morose, umoyu, almost cursing God. But he showed up in the wilderness. And how you ended was different than you started. The latter, say so somebody, the latter shall be greater than the former. Great is my God. Give him the praise. 